So just uh, pass the time now back to uh, Weinman to continue with the panel discussions and yeah, thanks. Because of the change um, of date of the event, uh, we had a pre-recording from Mr. Inderjit saying prior to this, um, is the team ready to... Okay, let me go ahead and get it. Uh, <laughs> should I play the recording? Sure, I think let's let's do it with, with Mr. Mr. Singh here. Yeah. We can say the same thing. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you hear Mr. In the chair? In the chair. All right, great. So, all right, let's just do it um, here. And so everyone, hello to everyone gathered at the book bar this afternoon. My name is Waiman, one of the contributors to this lovely book and a former political correspondent. And I think when we first started the book project, and JJ approached me. Um, I think one thing I already anticipated that there would be a diversity of voices, um, even a clash. And when JJ was saying that he really wanted someone to approach this, uh, especially when looking at the utility of the scheme for both the opposition and the PAP, uh, which is the ruling party. I think that was where I came in, in um, the chapter in this book. And I think in my years of reporting on local politics, I've always found the NCMP scheme quite peculiar and extraordinary, uh, but at the same time, um, acknowledging what uh, Professor Walter Wund just shared, I think we also around the world do see um, different innovations when it comes to how we approach parliamentary democracy. The innovation of the NCMP scheme over the past four decades has been central in the management of political representation in Singapore, as described by JJ in the book, uh, non-constituency members of parliament by design are both the losing candidates as well as the best scorers. So um, depending on you know which perspective you take a look at it, they might seem you know very different perspectives and you know shades um, in the way you look at NCMPs. We are at a point when the scheme has been amended twice to accommodate more NCMPs from the original six to the current twelfth and to give them voting powers. Um, we had uh, 10 full opposition MPs in Parliament post GE 2020, and I've been asked by JJ and the Ho Yong to frame today's discussion at one, as one that is broader, looking beyond the scheme to ask what is the future for the opposition in Parliament 40 years down the road since 1984 and also the year when two opposition MPs, Mr. J.D. Jaratnam and Mr. Chiam Si Tong, were also elected to parliament. I think it is a tough task and I'm quite honored that it's been entrusted to me. I know many in the audience who would be excellent if they are just in this seat, also facilitating the discussion. And uh, we also do have a Q&A session later with the panel, so do think about the questions you want to ask. With that, I'd like to quickly introduce the speakers we have today again. We have JJ, former NCMP, um, on the Workers' Party uh, ticket and also the co-editor of the book. We have Mr. Leong Manwai, uh, now serving his NCMP term uh, with the Progress Singapore Party. Uh, we have Mr. Indajit Singh uh, with us online. He's a four-term MP for the people People's Action Party from 1996 to 2015, and we have Dr. Paul Tambia, Chair of the Singapore Democratic Party. I think the SDP have not had an NCMP in Parliament. 